everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Puck. Today we are talking about some recommendations, specifically recommendations for what I like to call Arthurian adjacent books. So books that are not necessarily about like the central events and characters that you normally think of for King Arthur, but things that are a little bit more adjacent. So either about side characters uh, or giving like backstory to a character, something that's more like a prequel to the main story or a sequel to the main story, things that kind of happen around and adjacent to the main, what you usually think of as like the main story of uh, King Arthur and Camelot. Now the reason for this for me is that Arthurian legends are something that always intrigues me but is very hit or miss for me uh, and I think that like I always am intrigued by it because I generally like the setting and time period that a lot of uh, Arthurian legends you know are set in and I also like how magical they feel. There is often this very magical feel to Arthurian stories, um, but I don't necessarily like the main stories and especially not the main story that focuses on like King Arthur, Guinevere, Lancelot, that love triangle. I have always, from a very young age, found that love triangle specifically to be very frustrating and so I don't really like stories that focus on those um, and I also just like don't necessarily like some of the main stories. I did read The Once and Future King when I was like in high school so I'm like that's enough. <laughs> that's enough for me of like the main Arthurian legends. Now we're just focusing on the Arthurian adjacent stories. Um, but yeah so I recently read an, another Arthurian adjacent story which I really enjoyed so that kind of inspired uh, this recommendation video so I have four books to talk to you about uh, and then one that's kind of like not really about King Arthur but I was like we'll just throw it in here at the end uh, and we're gonna go from I think most historical to most fantasy in that order so let's just get started. So the first book that I want to talk about is The Lost Queen Trilogy by Signe Pike. So this is historical fiction set in early medieval Scotland and it is following Langareth who is the sister of the man who inspired the story of Merlin. So there was an actual person in history who they inspired the story of Merlin. He did have a sister who was a queen, but very little is known about her. And so this is Sidney Pike's um, story kind of fleshing out her character and trying to imagine like what would her character and her story have been. So in this we are following Langareth from a young age. Her mother has died. She has her twin brother Lelokin who is the one that eventually becomes Merlin. Um, and Langareth is the daughter of a minor king but she, if she could be, she really would love to be a healer, but she can't be because she's the daughter of a king and she's going to be married off into like a political marriage. Um, one of the central pieces of the story in this is the fact that there is the new religion of Christianity coming into Scotland at this time and Langareth and her family very much follow the old ways and the druidic uh, spirituality and religion and so she is trying to protect their way of life and her people uh, when her father wants to marry her to a Christian prince uh, who is in line to become high king and so she does not want to marry this prince but it may be the best way for her to gain some kind of influence to be able to best protect her people and so she has to make this decision of uh, how is she going what is she going to do in order to best protect her people and their way of life. There are so many things that I love about this book. I love the characters in this. I think that they are so well written. Uh, Langareth is such an interesting character. She is not perfect and you definitely see her grow and mature and she has to make some hard choices and some real sacrifices along the way. 
I also love uh, Signe Pike's writing. It's so beautifully and immersively written that I love her writing. Um, it does have a beautiful like nature atmosphere to it if that's something that you like. Uh, she has I personally love that you know she is a healer and so she cannot do that as her like main profession but it is a passion of hers that she uh, keeps throughout her life uh, and it also and she's very connected to their uh, druidic spirituality and has a connection to their land and the earth uh, so this just like is such a beautifully written book the first two books are out right now uh, and the third one should be coming out next year and there's going to be a prequel to this about a Pictish queen which I'm very excited about. The next book that I have is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is a historical fantasy retelling of a folk ballad called The Two Sisters which is a very good song so I'd recommend listening to it although it would spoil you for some of the things that happen in the book so maybe if you're interested in reading this listen to the song after you read the book uh but in this we're following three siblings who are the children of a king the oldest sister is um, a healer the middle child uh is wants to be acknowledged as their parents son instead of as their daughter uh and then the youngest child or the youngest sister wants uh, like romance and adventure. Their country is in peril of invasion and the they are losing touch with the magic that has uh, historically protected their people and their land. So they have had a magical connection to the land but over time they have been losing touch with that um, and that is putting them at risk as new invaders are coming into their country. Uh, there are also some new figures who are appearing such as Myrden who is kind of a Merlin figure uh, and also a mysterious young man named Tristan who may cause some trouble among the siblings. So this is actually kind of like a origin story for King Arthur. Uh, so it does have like a Merlin character but it also indicates that one of the characters in this will like eventually become a King Arthur figure. Uh, so that's sort of the the connection to this like Arthurian adjacent story. But this is very much a different, it's not like a normal Camelot type story because it is a retelling of this ballad that is really about uh, like strife and uh, jealousy between sisters. But in this I really enjoyed Lucy Holland's uh, writing, this like world that she's writing in, and I also really loved seeing a retelling of this, um, this like folk ballad specifically. It's a story that is very dark in some ways and can get a little bit gruesome towards the end, uh, but I really enjoy that story and so it was really fun to see a retelling of it here. Um, I do have a full review for this book. I actually have a review for The Lost Queen also. I think I have reviews for all of the books <laughs> that I'm about to talk about. So I'll link all of them in the description if you want like more detail because some of these it's been a little while since I've read them. Uh, but uh, I have a full review for this. I do feel like I was maybe a little bit overly critical of it in that review so kind of take it with a grain of salt because as I have continued uh, like as time has passed and I have continued to look back on this I actually really enjoyed this book. The book that inspired this video is Spear by Nicola Griffith. So I just recently read this. This is the shortest one on this list. It's a little novella standalone uh, which is a gender bent queer Arthurian retelling of specifically focusing on Percival. So in this we start out following our main character who is a young unnamed girl who is living out in the forest with her mother. We know that her mother has um, something, it has run from something in her past and is hiding from something which is why they live alone in the woods uh, and her mother has like 
magical wards over them so that they can't be found by magic and they don't really can like interact with other people but of course over time uh, our main character becomes more curious about the outside world and finds other people to kind of observe to learn more about the world and eventually she decides that um, she is meant to be one of King Arthur's knights um, and is meant to like go to Camelot and so she teaches herself how to fight she finds a horse and um and like armor and gear and stuff like that and kind of patches it all together into something that is usable and sets out to go to Camelot and make a name for herself along the way and then of course we find she gets to find out more about her own herself her past and her own mother um as she reconnects with more elements of the outside world. I think the thing that I loved most about this was the writing and atmosphere of it. I just, Nicola Griffith's writing is so beautiful and atmospheric. Uh, it has such a distinct feeling to it. It feels very magical. The magic in this very much feels like it is a legend. Uh, so it's not very explained. Uh, it does very often give our main character like an upper hand on things because she does have this kind of nature magic where she's able to like speak to the wind and like communicate with animals and stuff. So it, it gives her uh, an upper hand like when she is fighting because she can like know more things about uh, her, surround her surroundings. But overall the book just has this very like magical feel to it that I really enjoyed and this was so much fun to read. Then the last book that I have is an old favorite, very nostalgic for me, uh, which is The Great Tree of Avalon, uh, Child of the Dark Prophecy by T.A. Barron. This is the first book in a trilogy, but like my, part of a larger series. So T.A. Barron has a series that is a retelling of um, of like the story of Merlin telling his story from when he's like a very young age and like growing up and learning thing like learning things and becoming Merlin and all of that. This takes place after that and so this takes place in Avalon which in this case is a giant tree and that people live on the roots and like the tree is so giant that each root is like a country. So in this we were following three main characters. One of them is Tamwin who is a wilderness guide that we really don't know too much. He doesn't know much about his own past um, or his family but he is just trying to survive and uh, the way he does that is by being a wilderness guide and he kind of inadvertently gets uh wrapped up into some of the events and like dragged into a quest in this book um then another character is ellie who is a priestess uh they have this very uh nature-based religion that she is a young priestess for where and she has a um like a water spirit who is a friend of hers that travels with her who is like this kind of like a grumpy old man who always travels with her um and then the third character is scree who is a eagle man uh who uh is kind of trying to find his way among his people and like trying to find his place uh, but is also keeping some secrets. Now in this world Merlin is very much present as like a mythical figure in this world but it has been a very long time since he has been seen uh, and people don't really know what has happened to Merlin but the stars are starting to go out and it is indicating the beginning of a prophecy uh, where they're about the true heir of Merlin and the child of the dark prophecy which will spell the end of Avalon and one of our three main characters uh, is the true heir of Merlin who will save Avalon and one is the child of the dark prophecy who can destroy it uh, and so they end up on a quest to try and save Avalon. Uh, so this is definitely the most fantasy 
of the three. I read this when I was in maybe late middle school and I really loved it. This is like a very nostalgic read for me. Uh, but it's a really fun world and I think I would at this point categorize it as probably like middle grade to young YA. I think the characters in this are maybe like 16 but it reads like it's maybe like young YA to like later middle grade. Um, but it is a really fun series and it has a really fun world with all these different like magical beings and like nature spirits and um, it just it's just such a fun series. I would definitely recommend it. Again I have reviews for all of these uh, and I have a full trilogy review uh, for this. So those are the four books that I have that are uh, kind of Arthurian adjacent. I do have one kind of random book that I'll throw in that is not Arthurian but I feel like it has kind of an Arthurian feel to it almost um, which is the Breedy Chronicles by Juliet Marillier. This is a series that I just recently reread and one of the things that I kept thinking while I was reading it was like the main one of the main characters especially in the first book has an almost King Arthur feel to him. So this is a historical fantasy that's relatively low fantasy uh, that is following Breedy who was a Pictish king, uh, but this is starting following him from like six years old and he's being raised in isolation by a druid. The druid believes that he has this great destiny before him to, be, to become a great king of the Picts. Um, and so he is trying to raise him like it, very like steeped in the old religion and the old ways so that he will be best prepared to become the great king he is meant to be. When he is about six years old, he finds a baby girl left on their doorstep. Everyone else thinks that they should not take the baby in and just hope that the fair folk take it back because they think it must be one of the fae and therefore evil. But Breedy is very, is so convinced that this is a gift from the Shining One who is one of their goddesses and that he is meant to know this person that they end up taking the, the baby in uh, and they grow up together and her name is Twala. Uh, and so the first book is about the two of them as they are growing up uh, and, you know, com becoming, becoming adults. I guess it doesn't go all the way to adulthood uh, for them, but we're following them as they are growing up and they have this very strong bond and uh, everyone is very suspicious of Twala, but she ends up being more integral to Breedy's uh, destiny than anyone would have expected. So, the reason though that this feels almost Arthurian to me is because of uh, not only like the setting and time period of this and this like historical fantasy feel, but because Breedy as a character is this sort of like destined great king um, and he has this feel of like he is this person who is really trying to be like be the best person that he can and always trying to do the right thing and most of his struggles come from just like, like trying to do the right thing in situations when that is not encouraged or most advantageous to him um, and he just he kind of feels like an Arthur like an Arthur kind of character. Um, so if you're interested in something that is not actually an Arthurian retelling but you would like something that has like a character that kind of feels like a King Arthur destined great king type story then you might like the Brady Chronicles. Uh, I also have a full series review for this. So those are all of my Arthurian adjacent and one random <laughs> book uh, recommendations. I would love to know if you have any recommendations for other um, Arthurian retellings, especially Arthurian adjacent ones, uh, because as I said, it's always something that intrigues me, so I will continue to pick them up and hope for the best. Uh, and I would love to get to read more because when I love them, I really love them. Um, they just are a little hair miss for me, but I would love to know what are some of your favorite Arthurian retellings or reimaginings, reinterpretations, uh, and 
all of that. But thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!